Hey guys, what is going on today? Bojo here, and we are back for our NHL 16 Be a GM following the Philadelphia Flyers, as we are going to be starting our year four playoff run here in, in round number one up against the Columbus Blue Jackets. So, we ended off a last video finishing off year four. Flyers ended off with a record of 52, 26, and 4. So, if you're not counting the overtime losses, a perfect 2.0 win loss ratio on the year, which is pretty good. Had more wins than the Carolina Hurricanes, but unfortunately their 11 overtime and shootout losses were enough to get them the President's Trophy this year, as well as the first seed in our division. So, we're going to be sitting at a second seed here, going up against the Columbus Blue Jackets for round number one. So, before we take a look at their team, I wanted to do some line edits for you guys, since I wanted to see if we could do anything with the power play in any sorts to possibly maybe get that jump start, because our power play was bottom five in the NHL this year. So we want to make sure we try to make some changes to that in order to boost our power play tools. But as for our five on five lines, nothing is going to change on that. So we're still going to have Oshi, Giroux, and Vorchek in line number one. Second pair, Shen, Couturier, Simmons, Patan, Lawton, Reed, and then McMillan, Kruger, and White for our offense. Defense, same thing. Nothing's going to change Change with Haig, Sandheim, Provorov, Gostisbehere, Delzato, and Moran. Now, as we do move to the power play here, here's the changes that we have made to it. So, I'm using a little bit of real life logic to go with some power play options here. So, I'm going to put Wayne Simmons, Claude Giroux, and Jake Voracek on the first pair. I'm going to take Matt Reed off of the point and move up Braden Shen to the point here. And I'm also going to take off Shane Gostis Bear and move up Travis Sanheim to the first unit power play. So, we're really loading up the first power play with all these high overalls. On the second pair, we're going to have TJ Oshie, Sean Couturier, and Matt Reed with Michael Delzato and Shane Gostas Bear on the second power play unit. There were some good suggestions to maybe put Patan in there instead of like Reed or somebody along those lines. You know, Patan would be a good option there, but I'd still need that sniper on there instead of Reed. Maybe you could put him in there instead of Oshi, but they kind of have the exact same puck moving skills and senses, except Oshi is just a tiny bit better than Patan. That's why he's not going to make his way onto the power play. And then on the uh, four-man power play, nothing's changed there. I haven't changed anything with that because you're rarely going to get a four-man power play. All the extras are good. Goaltenders are good. And we should be good to go into the playoffs for this uh, simulation. So let's start off by... Uh, let's go to the league settings first. Let's go to auto rotate goalies and turn that off. Since we know we don't need that on anymore. Injuries are still going to be on. I'm going to save my game right here. Just overwrite it. Just so all my sa sa changes do save. Or if we get a freeze looking at the Columbus Blue Jackets. Which we are going to do right now. Alright, so let's go take a look at the Columbus Blue Jackets in the regular season so far here in year number four. Let's see how much has changed with this team and who they got on their squad. Alright, so we're going to start with the forwards here. And let's take a look at what they got. All right, so Ryan Johansson, 93 overall, pretty good. Uh, Oliver Bjorkstrand, 85. Nick Foligno, 87. Brandon Saad, 86. Alexander Wenberg, 85. Derek Broussard, 86. Brandon Dubinsky, 86. Paul Bittner, 83. Sonny Milano, 85. Kirby Reichel, 84. Boone Jenner, 84. David Clarkson, 81. And TJ Tynan, 79 so he might have played some games in there for uh injury purposes i'm not sure if he's going to be on their team right now but this columbus blue jackets team is actually not too shabby they got a lot of 85 and 86 overall players on their squad kind of what we have as well but um you know these guys seem a lot more offensively mine they're all young too like all their players are very very like in their 84 85 86 area are very very young players I mean, like, yeah, Boone Jenner, who's 25, Reichel, 24, Sonny Milano, 22, Bittner, 22. Um, and then you have, like, the the kind of veteran guys, but then you also have Wen Wenberg, who's 24, Sod's 26, Bjorkstrand's only 24, you still have Ryan Johansson, who's 26. So it's a very young Columbus Blue Jackets team forward-wise, and they're very good. Although they didn't put up many points this year. They had a lot of... Uh, they had Johansson had 71, but that's about it, and it drops off to 50 after that, so... Kind of what we had as well. Yeah, it's kind of similar to what we had as well. But it looks like they got a couple more 40-point guys than we did. But, you know, it's a pretty good team. It's a very good forward uh, core. Like I said, a lot of 85s and 86s, 84s in there. So, it's pretty solid offensively. All right. So on defense, they're going to have Jack Johnson, 88. Der uh, David Savard, 86. Ryan Murray, 88. Dylan Hetherington, 85. 
Dalton Prout, 81, Ian Cole, 82, Alex Petrovic, 80, Matt Donovan, 79, and Nate Schmidt, 77. So I don't, I doubt Schmidt's on their team. I would think it's Johnson, Savard, Murray, Hetherington, Prout, and Cole, since they are like the 80, um, they're the, the 80, 80 game played player. So they have Prout and Cole in their bottom pair. They have Hetherington and probably Savard and then Murray and Johnson. So their top two is good with Johnson and Murray. Savard's pretty good at 86 and a Hetherington's okay with an 85. Their bottom six is not too great. So we definitely have the edge there in bottom six. And I think we might have the edge on defense because we have Provorov and and uh, Sandheimer are like 80s, like 88, 87. Um, Ghost is up there at 85. Hag's up there at 87. So yeah, we come very close with these guys on defense. And then goaltending, they also have this guy. Sergei Bobrovsky is on the case, 91 overall. And Chad Johnson at 83 in case anything happens with him. All right, so... It's a very good, it's a very underrated Columbus team, to say the very least. They definitely have some good players on their squad. Nothing to, nothing to uh, harp on. This team is very evenly matched up with us. I definitely think we might have the better studs, because we have Giroux and Voracek and a guy like Wayne Simmons. Uh, same thing with Shen, too, since he's like an 87. So we might have the better stars on offense, but it's very evenly matched all the way around how you look at the team. So gonna be a very interesting series to say the least they uh the goaltender they definitely have some goaltender uh advantages over us as well all right so let's see max talbot um i feel like i'm not getting the ice time i feel i deserve in this organization uh let's see max i need you to go out there and leave me no choice to give you more ice time negative effect that's all right once again you shouldn't be complaining because you're a depth player all right so here we go team meeting this is a big game it's a game one of the series and it doesn't matter who you are we need to play hard and as a team we have to be the big picture here build up confidence and get those wins whether it's this or games uh whether it's this game or game seven i need the best out of you every night without fail our journey to the cup starts now use what you've learned and lean on your teammates we can do this you know what let's just uh let's look at big picture here once again second option never fails there we go second option never fails so we got to build up that confidence and see what happens. And remember, if we have some injuries that do happen with our bottom pairs, we have a lot of guys that can definitely fill in on the squad. So here we go. Let's get it started here, boys. Game one up against the Columbus Blue Jackets. We do have home ice advantage in this series. Let's see if those power play changes actually do uh, count for anything here. But let's see how it goes. Here we go. First period here between the Blue Jackets and the Flyers. And it's going to be a nothing a nothing score after the first 11 shots to eight. Second period. Nothing and nothing again. 16 shots, a 215. So not many shots taken by us in the second period. Columbus fought back a little bit, but it is a nothing nothing game going into the third period here. And a very scoreless game. So both goaltenders doing good, except as I say it. Alexander Wenberg gets one right there in the slot. Power play for the Flyers. Can they capitalize on it? They cannot. So Alexander Wenberg with the only goal so far here in the third period. 10 minutes ago. Another power play for the Flyers. And it seems like the power play struggle struggles still continue here. Can they get a late one here to tie it up late? Empty net, maybe? No, it is not. And it's going to be a one to nothing game between the Blue Jackets and the Flyers. Alexander Wenberg getting the only tally of the game from Boone Jenner and David Clarkson. So, goal scoring, non-existent there in game number one. So, that's not really all too... Uh, it's not how you want to start off game number one at all, getting shut out one to nothing at all. But... You know, that's not too bad. Our defense played good, which is nice to see. But, you know, we got to definitely pick it up after that game. All right, Coots. I uh, feel good about my performance over the last two couple games. Well, not about last game. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you can always do better. Don't rest on your laurels. Once again, Sean likes to be the... Oh, no. Sean was the guy who likes to be hard-nosed. That's right. You got to put hard nose on Coots. That's right. All right. Being down the playoffs is just a few steps away from being out of the playoffs. But I thought I had a great team. Who thrived under pressure? Was I wrong? Oh, Jesus. We need to play smart and avoid costly mistakes. I think we can pull out of this. It's times like these when we get the measure of a team where, where the paper's going to write tomorrow. The fans are still behind us. They expect the things. Let's not get this point that we got this. All right. Once again, let's just avoid costly mistakes. Once again, second option never fails. Um, Don't worry about it, boys. It was a one nothing game, number one. Very defensive-minded game. We just got to get the offense going and the power play going a bit. If we still have some troubles, struggles on the power play there... Might have to make some uh, changes there. Because it seemed like we were very disciplined that game. Columbus was giving us chances. And uh, we weren't capitalizing on them all too much. So we got to make sure we capitalize here on this first game. And game number two and split the series. Here we go. Game number two. There you go. Starting off right. Nick Patan with a goal right there before I even start simulating. That's what I'm talking about. All right. First period. And they tie it back up. But that's good to see. Nick Patan gets us started 30 seconds into the game with a goal there. But Brandon Dubinsky does tie it back up. 
eight shots to 12. Second period, four to two. I like that. Three straight goals from the Flyers. Ryan White, Brayden Shen, and Claude Giroux all get to Sergei Bobrovsky there in the second period. Dubinsky does get his second of the game to make it a two-goal game, but Flyers really came through in shots here, 30-17. to 17. They came out firing here in the second period, and that's what I like to see. So we got a two-goal lead going into the third period here. Let's see if our defense can hopefully shut things down here. Power play for Columbus, and they do score on it. Oliver Bjorkstrand does tie, gets one on the power play to make it a 4-3 to three game now. All right, come on, boys. Let's... Hunker, hunker down here on defense. We got seven minutes left to go here. Come on, keep firing the shots at the net. Keep playing good defensively, boys. Come on, hold out. Three minutes left to go. Two, one, and time is out. And that'll do it for game number two. So the Flyers have a very good second period there, getting three past Sergey Bobrovsky. Did let up one power play goal there late to Bjorkstrand, but Mason does shut the door nonetheless. And the Flyers walk away with a four to three win here in game number two to split the series. So Nick Patan from Scott Lawton and Michael Delzato, Ryan White from McMillan and Kruger, so the fourth line capitalized on that goal. Shen from Sandheim and Simmons, and then Giroux from Voracek and Oshie. So uh, two points there from Brandon Dubinsky, two points from Reichel, and uh, that's about it for that. All right, so we do what we want, we do what we need to do there. After being down the first game, we split the series up at one, going to Columbus now for games at three and four. So very good job there, boys. We have split the series. All right, so series is tied at one. Off to Columbus we go. Here we go, boys. Let's keep it together. Power play didn't really, I didn't see any chances for power play goals, and I can't tell in the simulation, so we'll just continue to keep it there. All right, so here we go. Series tied at one. First period here in Columbus, and we already get a goal immediately right before I started the simulation, and I simulated again, so let me pause it there. So we got one goal there from Sean Couturier. Second period... And Columbus gets one back once again. Oliver Bjorkstrand ties it up at one again. 18 shots all around. And it is a tie game going into the third period. Tied up at one. All right. So once again, it's another pretty good defensively minded game here. And Columbus back and forth. So had a little bit of offense going there. And now the defense seems to shut down. Power play for the Flyers. They can't capitalize on it again. Uh, we're going to go to overtime here. Two minutes left. Minute. 56. Yep, we're going to overtime. All right, boys. Up power play in overtime. Come on, boys. It's a long one. Somebody score, please. Oh, my God, dude. Hey, we do get it. Marcus Kruger in overtime. Wow. An unlikely source there in overtime. Another long power play for the Philadelphia Flyers. They couldn't capitalize on it again. And that power play struggle still continuing for this Flyers team. But luckily, our fourth liner comes in clutch there in overtime. And we win it 2-1. to one. A pretty big shootout there. I mean, let's look at the penalty summary. I mean, holding and tripping from Hag and Kruger, but look at all the penalties that the Columbus Blue Jackets gave us. Elbowing and holding. Like, they gave us five power play opportunities. A lot of hooking calls, but Flyers couldn't capitalize on it on the penalties. But still, they won the game at 2-1. to one. Sean Couturier from TJ Oshie, and then Marcus Kruger from Ryan, Ryan White and Brandon McMillan. Another good fourth line opportunity there for the Flyers line. Probably just caught them off on a weird change. But this is not good for us. Jacob Voracek has been injured with a separated shoulder. His estimated return is a July 11th. So that is not good for this Flyers team whatsoever. So Jake Voracek goes down with an injury. So we're going to move Wayne Simmons, the Wayne train, back up there to the first. Uh, we need a sniper on that second pair, so we're going to move uh, Matt Reed up to the second line. We are going to move Ryan White. I think that's probably our best option there. Like, who do we have for right wingers? We have Talbot, who's scratched on right wings. Do we have any left wings who are scratched? We don't, and I don't think we have any centers that are scratched. I think it's just Talbot. Uh, we have Brooks like scratched as well, but I'd rather bring in Talbot since... He had some pretty good point opportunities. So we're going to move Ryan White up to the third line. And we are going to insert Max Talbot into the fourth line. So we got to make sure we do some line changes here. But still, Flyers came away with a big win there. That's that's going to suck. All right, so I want to substitute in all lines. Ryan White, I don't think he has any penalty kill time. So let's substitute in all lines right there. Uh, okay, so special teams. Yeah, we, we okay. I shouldn't have done that because that's going to substitute in all lines for Wayne Simmons. So, uh, let's put, let's move up Reed, and let's put in, instead of Talbot, let's put in, let's, you know what, 
Let's give Patan the shot. Why not? Nick, you got a goal in uh, the last couple game, in the one game or so. So you're going to get a chance there on the power play, my man. All right, Talbot, no. We want, uh, we can put, we can put Braden Shen, I think, in there. Because I think Couturier's on there. So we can put Braden Shen right there. Because I don't think he's taking face-offs now. We can put Braden Shen on there. Penalty kill, Ryan White is, okay, Talbot, uh, Simmons is not there anywhere else. Three-man penalty kill is fine. We're good to go with all that fun stuff. So Jacob Voracek is out till July 11th. All right, so when is that on the calendar? July 11th. We're in April. Oh, Jesus. May, June, July. Voracek's out for the entire playoffs. Yeah. The draft is in on July 1st. Voracek's done. Jake is out for the entire playoffs. That's a really big hurt. We just lost our top line sniper there for the rest of these playoffs. Oh, boy. Well, that is going to really hurt us. That is really going to hurt us. All right, so let's stop the simulation there for the AHL. All right, we're going to have to have some depth players really step up for us right now because Claude just lost his line mate. And we're going to have some big, big step ups here. I mean, Simmons, Voracek, and Giroux are reunited on that first pair. Well, it's actually, it's Oshi, Giroux, and Simmons now. So it's going to be an interesting line pair, but... We do have a two to one lead nonetheless, but we gotta go throughout these entire playoffs now without Jacob Voracek. So let's go, boys. We need some guys some guys to really step their games up now. Here we go. First period. One to nothing. Sonny Milano gets it started. Eleven to six are the shots, though. Not really too great there. Second period, three to nothing. Ryan Murray and Jack Johnson. I mean, I'm not gonna blame Jake for that, but I'm gonna blame Mason for that, because they only had 12 shots and three goals. So that is not really great on the job of Steve Mason and the defense, nonetheless. I think Mason just had a pretty big game. Yep, four to one, David Clark four to nothing, David Clarkson. He's just gonna finish this one off. I'm just gonna speed sim it. We had another power play there, but we don't capitalize on it. And Columbus shuts us out four to nothing in game number four. To split the series once again at two games apiece with us having home ice advantage now. And it becomes a three game series. So that is not good. Not good that Voracek is out and we lose, we we see the effects of it right there that Voracek's uh, offense brings to the squad. I mean, he didn't have any goals there, but he got assists, so we're going to have to really figure out something here. If we don't get any goal score in this game, something's going to have to change, but it's a three-game series now. Tied at two games apiece. We got to really clutch it through here back at home. Here we go, boys. Come on. Let's go. First period, two to one. All right, we'll take it. Claude Giroux starts off the scoring. Two minutes in, Ryan Johansson answers back a minute later, but then Robert Hag gets one back, two to one lead for the Flyers. 12 shots to six, come on Mace. Not taking many shots on this right now, you gotta do your job here, stopping most of these easy shots. All right, second period, two to one still. All right, we'll take it 21 to 17, so they picked it up back in shots for sure, but we do hold on to that two to one lead still. All right, going into the third period here, with a one goal lead, I need an insurance marker here, boys. I need some insurance. I need an insurance marker like you do not believe it. Come on, give me that two-goal lead still. Ten minutes left to go. I would rather feel more comfortable if we got a goal here, but you know what? If the defense wants to play good here in the third period, I will have nothing against that. I will have nothing against that. Thank you. Empty netter for Claude Giroux. And Boone Jenner answers back with one second left. But luckily, we still hold on to that because thank God Claude Giroux got that empty netter. If not, this game would have been going to overtime. But nonetheless, Flyers come back at home once again and win 3-2 over the Blue Jackets. So, Claude Giroux from Wayne Simmons. Haig from Simmons and Oshie. Claude Giroux from Oshie and Sanheim. So, Giroux with a two-point night. Simmons with a two-point night. Oshie with a two-point night. So, we shall take it three points from the top line. Two point, three two-point nights from our top line. Oshie, Simmons, and Giroux. So, we will take it. All right. So... We have a 3-2 lead in the series now. 3-2 lead in the series. We can close out the series tonight. So let's go to our player morale here. We advance to the next round. If we win tonight, let's get it done. And once again, let's just play smart, work hard, we'll win. Tonight is another game. Let's just keep it up here. There we go. Once again, second option never fails. All right, so we got 3-2 lead here back in Columbus. We've won one of the games in Columbus. So we are 1-1 one one so far with the games in Columbus. But we can... Once again, move on to the next game, next round of the playoffs here. If we can close this game out in the game six and hopefully not 
prevent uh, prevent a game number seven because you know anything can happen in a game seven. All right, here we go. First period here, game number six, two to one. We'll take it once again. Claude Giroux starts off the scoring yet again. Captain Claude really stepping up here in these past two games. Brandon Dubinsky answers right back, but then Wayne Simmons clutches it once again. Two to one lead for the Flyers, fourteen to seven once again. So Flyers out shooting Columbus pretty much every first period so far of this game. And Columbus is getting not double-digit shots, but Mason's, once again, still got to play better. But we got a one-goal lead. Second period, 2-2. Two two. They tie it back up. Kirby Reichel very early on in the second period. And it is a tie game going into the third period. So it's 2-2, two 23-20 two, to 20 are the shots. And this is going to be a very crucial third period here. We got to capitalize, boys. Come on, throw pucks on the net. Throw them on Bobrovsky. Come on. Not much third period scoring has happened on this Flyers team. Columbus has gotten the better of the third period scoring, it seems, in this series. But Flyers might have to clutch something out here. Or we are going to go to overtime, it seems. We are going to go to overtime here in game number six. 30 shots to 27. Anything here can happen in overtime. Here we go. We're either going to a game seven. Oh, five on three. That's it. Some oh, wow. We kill it off. Wow. I am surprised. Come on, boys. Get some energy off of that penalty kill. Ah, Dubinsky. Fuck that guy, by the way. Dubinsky from a weird angle. 32 shots all evened up, but the Blue Jackets score, and they force a Game 7 back home in Philadelphia. <sighs> Man, did not want that to happen at all. Flyers have not had much third-period scoring at all in this series. At all. All right, we're going to do the WHL now for six weeks again. <clears throat> we got to hold the team meeting here, boys. Let's go. 86% locker room chemistry. Uh, this is this is a lousy position in facing playoffs. Once again, second option never fails. All right. We got to do something here. I think I got to edit, do some edit line edits here. I got to make something happen because power play does not seem to be clicking right now. Um, you know what? Nick Patan, you're moving up to there. Reed will move down to the third. Oshie Simmons and Drew seems to be working because Claude seems to be getting his goal scoring up. Um, I don't know if how I feel about Ryan White on the uh, third line. I guess they'll have to do, though. Yeah, two-way forward. I'd rather have that. Defense. Nothing really I can do there on defense. Special teams. We got to do some of this power play. Um, you know what? That Reed, Sim uh, Simmons, Giroux, and Reed, uh, uh, Oshi combo seems to be working very well for us. So let's switch those guys up. Reed goes back down to there. We can switch him up with Batan. And you know what? I'm going to move Ghost back up there to the top pair to play with Shen and Ghost. So that's what I'm going to do there. Make those changes. Here for our final game here in game number seven, which could be our final game of this Playoff run. I don't want to end off early here, but we got to make something happen. We made some changes, made some five on five changes here. So let's get it done, boys. Here we go. Eight minute, eight times eight simulation the entire game. Five on four power play to start things off. And once again, two power plays, boys. Come on. There you go. Sean Couturier on a power play. And Sean Couturier again. Literally almost 20 seconds after he scores that power play goal, comes down and scores again. So two. First period goals from Sean Couturier there in the first period. And that is how the first period is going to end. Two to nothing lead for the Flyers. Two goals from Sean Couturier. 14 to 9. And that is a good way to start. Power play goal. So maybe the power play change has helped us. I don't know. But we're going to start off here in the second now with a two to nothing lead. Another power play. Columbus does not seem to be very disciplined in this game so far. And a third goal. Sean Couturier completes the hat trick. Not even halfway through the second period. My goodness. Sean Couturier shows up in Game 7 like you've never believed it. Throws up a hat trick before the third period even starts. And the Flyers have a 3 to nothing lead. My goodness. A power play goal and two 5-on-5 five five regulation goals for Sean Couturier in this game. Throws up the hat trick. And the Flyers have a 3 to nothing lead coming into the third period now with 15 to go. Steve Mason is doing a very, very, very good job in net. Flyers defense is playing good. Another 5-on-4 power play there. 5-on-4 for the Blue Jackets. Flyers kill that one off. Five minutes to go, and it looks like your Flyer, Philadelphia Flyers are going to pull out in a game number seven with a 3 to nothing win as Sean Couturier provides the only goal scoring in this game, putting up a hat trick in game seven. Man, what a good game there from Sean Couturier. Steve Mason, 
did his due diligence as well. 29 saves for the shutout. Brandon Shen with three assists as well. And a very good job there from uh, Sean Couturier, from Braden Shen and Nick Patan on the two first two goals, and then from Sanheim and Shen again. So it looks like Sean Couturier and Braden Shen like lighting it up right now. Maybe that's the confidence booster that they need, but a very good game from Sean Couturier. In game number seven, Nick Patan had two assists as well, which is really nice to see. And the Flyers pull away in game number seven. And they move on to round number two. So I'll take it. All right. Yes, that series is in the rearview mirror. We're off to the next round. And you know what? We did face adversity and triumph. That one is actually appropriate. Face adversity and triumph. Still is going to suck that we're, we do not have Jake Voracek now for the rest of the playoffs. But you know what? We got to work through it the best way we can. All right. So let's simulate a day here. And it looks like we're going to stop. And our next round opponent is going to be the President's Trophy winning Carolina Hurricanes in round number two. Fitting. All right. Whoops. Didn't want to go to that because that is the regular season stats. Let's go to the playoff stats, shall we? Uh, yeah. I'm going to take a look at the team stats as well because I got to see how this power play is doing. Seems like it came clutch in game number f in game seven, but you know what? We got to see it. So Sean Couturier putting up that three-point night in game number seven. Uh, five points in seven games. He is our leading point scorer so far. Four goals for Sean Couturier. But you know what? He got three of those in the game seven. So realistically, he only has two points in six games. So definitely need him to step his game up like that. Hopefully he can carry on with that nice game. Give him some confidence. Claude Drew with four points. Marcus Kruger with two. Uh, whoops, I named him. Sort of. Uh, Braden Shen with six points in uh, seven games. Once again, he had three points in game seven as well. So he's had three, point, three points in six games, which isn't bad. Uh, Wayne Simmons with five points. Uh, Sean Couturier with five. TJ Oshie with four. Claude Giroux with four goals. That's all I want out of Claude. I'd rather, I'd rather Claude be scoring goals now that Voracek is going to be out. So I need that from Claude. He is a minus two, but still. Nick Patan with three. Kruger with two. McMillan and White with two. Voracek obviously one point in three games, but he's going to be out with an injury. Scott Lawton with one point. Nothing from Matt Reed, so... There's that, and then Max Talbot, obviously, with nothing filling in for Voracek's spot. Defense, we have Travis Sanheim with three assists. Michael Delzato with one. Robert Hag with a goal. Ghost, Morin, and Provorov do not have anything, but at least the defense are all plus players. And then Steve Mason, a very good job in that game seven, nonetheless. Uh, 1.95 goals against average, four and two. Save percentage of 0 .92, 0 0.929 and one shutout for Stevie May, Stone Cold Steve Mason. All right, so not bad there from our player stats. Let's take a look at these team stats right now because I need to see how this Flyers team is doing here. Eastern Conference. Okay, so goals for per game is around two. I got to see this power play percentage. 8.7%. Jesus, man. 23 total power plays. Uh, power play percentage, 8.7%, which is not good. The positive side of that is the Carolina Hurricanes have a more, have, have, have had three more power plays than us and their percentage is worse than ours so taking penalties in this series in this next series actually could be crucial it's going to be whoever who's ever power play is better in the next series between us and carolina is really going to value from it the good thing is our penalty kill is doing a pretty decent job at 88.24 with a seven only 17 total penalties so we're doing a pretty good job of staying disciplined however the carolina hurricanes have also stayed pretty disciplined as well so it's going to be an interesting series going up against Carolina. Teams that both struggle on the power play, good on the penalty kill. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to see there. So, in the West, you had Chicago over St. Louis in six. Winnipeg swept Colorado. Edmonton swept Calgary. And Dallas beat the Arizona Coyotes in six. In the East, Philly beat Columbus in seven. Carolina beat the Islanders in six. Toronto beat Buffalo in seven. And the Rangers beat the Lightning in in five so in the west you're gonna have the chicago blackhawks up against the winnipeg jets and the edmonton oilers up against the dallas stars not really good for us since we have winnipeg's draft pick this year and then the east you have the carolina hurricanes up against the philadelphia flyers and the toronto maple leafs up against the new york rangers so very interesting matchups there going into round number two but yes we we did manage to pull out there with uh in game number seven I'm fortunate that we did lose Jacob Voracek now for the rest of these playoffs. So we're going to have to definitely make some decisions here. Let me know what you guys think. Here's the lineup. You think maybe we should call up somebody from the AHL squad to play 
somewhere on this squad? I don't know. I mean, we have a bunch of 83 overall players down there. Eric, uh, Nathan Noel is actually an 84 overall and is considered a third line checking forward. So technically, he should not even be playing right now in that AHL squad. He is currently ready to play on the NHL squad. He is a third line checking line forward. So maybe we scratch a guy like Max Talbot. We move... Um, move I like that like that's an option we could scratch Max Talbot move Ryan White back down to the fourth line call up Nathan Noel have him play on the third check on the third line with uh Nick Patan and Scott Lawton that is definitely an option that we can do there so you guys can let me know because he is a third line check it forward he is available to play there let me know what you guys think we should do about that because I th do think we have a scratch center that can play we can move Mark Oliver Wah up, and I believe we do have uh, we have LaBerge and Magali that could easily slot into that lineup there on the fourth line for the Phantoms. So there's the options right there, guys. No, Nathan Noel is available to play. You can move Ryan White down, scratch Talbot, and play him there with Matt Reed and Scott Lawton. Since Reed is a sniper, you know that could work out for us. So let me know what you guys want me to do there as well. So. That is it for this video, guys. We did manage to beat the Blue Jackets in seven games, but now we have to go up against the President's Trophy winning Carolina Hurricanes in round number two. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know what we should do. Thanks for your suggestions, and I'll see you guys next time. Leave a like, comment, subscribe as always. See you guys next time.